Hey everyone, and welcome back to Suited Aces Poker, where every week we watch hundreds of poker vlogger hands to bring you 10 of the best. And let me ask you this before we get started this week. Is there a favorite poker vlogger you have that you never see featured on Suited Aces? If there is, please let us know in the comments. We want to make sure that we're reviewing hands from all of the best poker vloggers out there. We have over 30 in our list, but if there's one that we're missing, let us know who that is. And while you're down there, why not click on the subscribe button? You know you want to, and it certainly helps out the channel. So give us a little subscribe, maybe even like this video if you think it deserves it. All right, folks, what have we got for you this week? Well, we've got some messy pots. We've got some interesting poker accessories. And we've got a nice explanation of exactly what VPIP is. So without further ado, sit back, relax, and let's make a start. Number 10 this week. And Jamin Burton is playing in a 510 cash game at the Bellagio in Vegas. And there's a nice river bet here to take down an otherwise messy pot. Under the gun opens to $30, which should mean he has a really, really strong hand. Action folds around to me in the small blind, and I call. This is a misclick with King Queen of Diamonds. It's not bad, bad, bad for me to find the call here, but 90 times out of 100, I'm raising. Either way, as played, we go to the flop heads up. 10 9 7 with two hearts and one diamond. I check, and he fires a half pot continuation bet. Although I have nothing but King High. I have the potential for a lot of somethings, so I call. The turn six of hearts brings in the front door flush, which, as you can see, I don't have. It also puts a one-liner to a straight on board, which you can also see that I don't have. I check and he checks it back. The fact that neither of us should have many eights at all in our ranges crosses my mind. I don't necessarily expect him to know and act upon this at 510, but it's forefront in my mind when I make the upcoming river bluff that I'm getting ready to make. The river reveals the ten of diamonds, which again, is a big nothing for my actual hand. King high most likely isn't good against the range of an under the gun opener as he can just have all of the ace x type hands. I lead for a hundred dollars. He thinks about it. Shows me pocket jacks. And they hit the muck. Thanks, man. This is a scary board. Number nine this week, and Wolfgang Poker is playing in a 10 20 40 cash game at the Hustler in California. And, well, don't you bring accessories to the poker table? What do you mean, no? Next hand, we're in the small blind with ace nine offsuit. Bunch of calls over to me. I put in the extra $30 as well, and we're off to a flop five ways, which comes ace four four with two diamonds. Top pair is good on this board. I don't know that yet. I check in flow, and the action gets around to Hillary. She checks behind, bringing in the seven of clubs. Probably could be stabbing here. Instead, I like to check again, which gives Richard the option to fire into this pot here with his pair of sevens for $200. Hillary puts in the call with her straight draw and flush draw actions on me. I could spring the trap here and make it 800. Would definitely be the best move in this exact spot. Instead, I like to call having underplayed my aces so far. We're going three ways to the river. We have a 72% chance of winning it until the seven of diamond peels off, giving Richard the best hand. He was value betting the turn knowing he was going to get there on the river. Oh well, I checked my option. I'm not going to bet into him. He fires out for $500. I go into the tank actually for a while here. You haven't seen it on this vlog, but Richard was doing a lot of crazy things and that's why I was thinking about calling him here. Ultimately, I'm pretty 50-50 in the moment whether I'm going to call or fold, so I ask him to pick a number one or two. But his hand is not as good as it is. Why would he do that? Because he wants you to call. Are you talking to me? Yeah. Or the guy behind me? One or two. Are you talking to me? Yeah. In my head, if he said the number two, I was going to call him. Number one was going to be a fold. He doesn't want to do that. Instead, he goes into his backpack and takes out something funny. Let's go, Richard. What is this? What you talking about? 
He puts on the clown mask. I quickly fold my cards. That's just way too strong of a move there, Richard. If you say number two, I was gonna call you, but uh... Come on, dog. Next time, next time. Fortunately for you, you're not getting any more of my money. Number eight this week, and Branson is playing in a 1-3 cash game, in a home game, actually, in Las Vegas, Nevada. And in a hand like this, it really does pay to know your opponent's VPIP. What is VPIP, we hear you say? Well, we'll let Branson explain. Now I look down at pocket jacks in the big blind. There's a straddle to $15 and slow poker opens to $50 from under the gun plus two. It folds around to sashimi in the small blind who goes all in for $214. But then something happens. So sashimi didn't realize slow poker had raised. She thought she was open jamming over the $15 straddle. So I should be well ahead of her range here, but here is my problem. It's this guy. He's tight. He's real tight. He's tighter than that jar of pickles my wife asked me to open last week. You know, the one that made me feel like I wasn't a man. He's tighter than Padme's outfit from Attack of the Clones. Yeah, he's tight. Oh, also there's this. I folded kings. I folded kings. I folded kings. Mom, I folded kings. This man can fold kings, pre-flop, in a cash game. So here's the plan. I'm not going to go all in to just get snapped off by his kings and aces a good chunk of the time. I am just going to call. He'll likely fold all of his mediocre hands anyway. I expect him to just call with ace-king, maybe pocket tens. I don't know, maybe he even folds those sometimes. And if he jams, I assume he has kings or aces, maybe queens, maybe, maybe, maybe ace king suited. So I call, slow poker jams. I only need roughly 27% equity to be profitable. It's, 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 it's John, <laughs> that's the problem. He has kings or aces, I'm telling you right now. I don't even think I have 25% into like the poker space. And, yeah. and I am embarrassed. Slow poker has ace king off. I just didn't think he'd jam with ace king. Sashimi has king queen. The board runs out three king, four, four, ace. I would have gotten stacked had I called, but it still doesn't feel good making the incorrect play. At seven this week, and Wolfgang Poker is playing in that 10 20 cash game at the Hustler in California. And have you ever wondered how to play seven four offsuit? Wonder no more. Oh boy, you guys aren't ready for this next one here. It makes me want to puke just thinking about it. We haven't seen my cards just yet. We know Barry, Andrew, and Lynn are all in the hand. There's $800 in the middle. It's a $100 bomb pot for time. In the high stakes games, they don't rake the table. They just take a collection for time. So it's a much more fun way to decide who has to pay for it. Some pretty great hands here already, considering the board is 965 with two spades. The action goes straight to the flop, in case you guys weren't aware. But uh, Barry Jr. has pocket tens, Andrew has queens, and Lynn bets out here for $100 with an unknown hand. The action folds around to the me, and I have both Barry and Andrew crushed. What do I have? None less than the bullets. Pocket aces here. How do I pick up aces in an eight-way bomb pot when I can't do anything pre-flop? Just my luck, but I still need to raise it up here. Even though anyone can have any two cards, there's nine, six, five, six, pocket fives, pocket six, pocket nines. I still need to find out where I am in the hand and charge against any of the draws, like one pair with a straight draw or maybe two spades. Pocket aces here are very suspect. I make it $310. Interested to see what Barry Jr. and Andrew Nimi do here in the spot with two over pairs as well. Action's on Barry and he didn't come to fold. He puts in the call, but Andrew's experience is shown in perfect form here when he gets away from the ladies. They're not seducing him here on this board. He mucks his cards and action's back over to Lynn. Let's not forget, she was the one on this flop who initiated the action. $100 into that $800 pot is kind of weird. At the same time, when we raise it up to 310, it opens the door for her to do exactly just this, rip it all in in our face for 2340. 
Now you can see my cards, you can't see hers, but if we think about our hand, we have the Ace of Spades, which blocks a lot of the flush draws she might be doing this with. Therefore, I think she's a lot more weighted to two pair and sets. Reluctantly, I'm gonna have to fold here. Not exactly a great spot. Pocket Aces can't get married to them. Uh, it's a beautiful hand, but it's not beautiful when you go nine ways to a flop. So I make a very disciplined fold here and actions back over to Barry. Barry decides to fold his cards as well, and we're finally gonna see what Lynn had in this spot. What does she show? It's a dangerous card on his song. She shows a four. Ah. Four seven. I needed the seven. And I would have she was simply up and down. At number six this week, Mariano is playing in a $25, $50 cash game at the bike in California. And is this a slow roll on the end? I mean, I suppose he could have been beat. Let us know in the comments what you think. The straddle is on once again. There's a limp from late position. The small blind limps in as well. And I look down at 9-8 of spades in the big blind. Good enough for a raise, I think. So I make it $600 to go. And now the straddler on my left makes the call. The limper folds and so does the small blind. So not exactly what I was anticipating, but that's quite all right. We've got a nice hand going heads up to once again, a very nice flop. It's ace jack 10 with two spades. Yeah. So quite a lot going on for me. Not only should this be a good board for me with, you know, all those big cards out there, but I've actually got something pretty sweet. It's an open-ended straight draw as well as a flush draw. All those reasons are going to amount to me betting. So that's what I do. But Jay's not done with it just yet as he sticks around with a call. So we're off to a turn card looking for some help and it does not come. It's the 10 of clubs. Not exactly what I was looking for, but of course, like I mentioned, this is a good board for me and I'm going to continue betting, hopefully putting his hands like King Jack or Queen Jack in a tough spot. Maybe even just a single ace is not going to be in love with the situation here. So with all that in mind, I decide to size up now $4,000 to go. But once again, Jay decides to put the money in, so we're definitely looking for some help now, and there's lots of outs that could bring that to us. What do you know? That's what we get. The deuce of spades, giving me a fairly, I think, hidden flush. Given that there's the ace and the jack of spades out there, I would almost never have a flush draw here. So that paired with the fact that it definitely looks like he's got something after calling pre-flop, on the flop, and on the turn, I'm going to size up here and try to get some value. The pot is just over $11,000. So I decide to bet out $11,000, a pot sized bet. And I'm happy to see we don't get snap called. So that's always a good sign. He's in the tank, thinking it over, seems to be in a lot of pain with the situation. Not an easy decision for him, it seems. But after thinking it over for a few minutes, he decides to finally call. So that's going to be good news. I turn it over, announcing a flush. And we're up against a full house, pocket jacks. <sighs> rather heartbreaking, not gonna lie to you guys. After him thinking it over for so long, I thought we would definitely win this one, but as it turns out, I think my opponent was a little bit worried about seeing pocket aces, perhaps, or pocket tens, which, you know, it happens sometimes, so credit to him for thinking it over. Unfortunately, this one is not going our way, and it's a pretty big pot, which mostly defined how this session went. Number five this week, and Rampage Poker is playing in the King's Lounge, that cash game area in the World Series of Poker, right at the back of Paris. He's in a 5-10 game, and once is bad enough, but twice? I peel pocket queens in plus one with a straddle on, and I raise it up to $60. There are two players in position that decide to call the 60, and action folds around to the big blind. And he decides to three bet. He three bets to $420 and he's playing with give or take $2,300 behind in his stack. Uh, this is going to be fun, guys. We're pocket queens facing a three bet. We're in position. I'm in here. Let's just make the call. Maybe he has some bluffs and everyone else folds. So the pot's building pre-flop here. This might be the biggest pot we're going to play all night. Let's win it. The flop comes seven, four, three, two spades. He starts off with a small bet of $300, and I'm thinking this is a dream spot to just get it in. 
I'm in position, I have a pretty splashy image and I have a great hand. Everything is lining up to a perfect storm of just getting it all in. Hopefully he has maybe a hand like pocket tens, pocket jacks that I can just get everything in with. So I raise it up to 1400. Like I said, he has like 2300 in his entire stack. So me raising to this awkward sizing, maybe look a little too value-ish, but this seemed like an appropriate sizing at the time. And this player thinks about this decision for quite some time before ultimately electing on an jam. Yep, poor English, it's not end jam, but whatever. He goes all in, I snap call with my overpair. We talk about it for a little bit, about running it once or twice. This player wants to run it twice. That is okay with me. The first run out comes an ace. Wow, yeah, that can't be good for me at all. And the second run out comes a king. He has ace king off suit, not a single spade in hand. We ran it twice and he drills both of them. And safe to say, uh, this one, this one kind of hurt a little bit. I pay him $2,000 total. I just say nice hand, throw the pocket queens into the muck and I lose a big one, unfortunately. You know, it's hard to swallow this pill when you get it in pretty good and end up losing, but that's how poker goes sometimes. And how poker goes sometimes is sometimes you lose both of the runouts, even though you're a pretty big favorite. So there's that, the biggest pot I've played all night so far, and time to try to make up some losses. We're back with Rampage Poker at number four this week. This time, he's in a 2-5 cash game in the King's Lounge at the back of Paris, the World Series of Poker. And what's that, Ethan? Luck box, you say? For one of the last hands of the night, let's go over a doozy with Ace-7 offsuit on the button and the straddles on. There's a hijack player who limps $10, and I'm on the button, so I'm going to raise because why not? I raise up to 40 bucks, and plenty of action here on this table in the 2-5 streets. Small blind, under the gun, and hijack player make the call. So us four lovely people to a flop of Ace-7-3 all spades. Another monotone flop, but we have top two pair and action checks to me. I'm definitely going to bet for value, and I'm going to size to $60 here. Multi-way, I'm sure one of these people have a strong spade, potentially. Anyways, only the only player who straddled makes the call. She seems like someone who would play a pretty narrow range of hands, so let's navigate a turn, which is the jack of spades. That just sucks. Action goes check, check, because I'm not putting any more money into the middle until the river ace. Oh, sitting with the nuts, basically. I lose the ace jack. That's not relevant. I have the second nuts. Anyways, this is just a complete bank. And even better, she decides to put money into the middle herself. She fires out $85. Obviously, sitting with the basically best hand possible, it's time to raise. And I'm trying to get the maximum amount here because I'm stuck piles in this game. And I'm thinking a normal raise number would probably be like $300. But I'm thinking if, I, let's say I did raise the $300, I feel like the only hands that would call would be the king of spades and maybe an ambitious queen of spades. The rest are all gonna fold, whatever the hell she's holding. And I'm thinking that if I'm trying to raise and get called by only like a few hands that would actually do that, seems like those hands would call any size of a raise. So why not go for all of it? I'm all in, yep. Yep, dealer, I'm all in for $805 total. This is certainly not a spot that I would play normally in bigger games, but here in the two five streets, I think she can call with a king of spades or queen of spades, and that's basically it. And she goes deep into the tank and says she doesn't know how to fold her exact hand, and she flicks in the call with king eight of spades, a massive cooler, and we're on the right side of it. Who would have thought? Unfortunate to have to double through a large pot against this lovely lady whom was very, very nice the entire session. Shout out to you if you're somehow watching this video, but I'm a luck box. I'll take it down. I was buried the entire session. I just got a little bit back. And it's a good way to end off this session. Number three this week. And close to broke is playing in the $10,000 World Series of Poker main event. That's right, folks. Our very first hand on the channel from the main event at the World Series. And you can hear the disappointment in Kieran's voice. But to have this happen in the main event, ah, uh, 
We really do feel that pain, Kieran. We are about 20 minutes away from dinner break, and we have ourselves a massive stack, somewhere in the neighborhood of 90k. Anyways, in this following hand, middle position makes it 1k, and I find myself on the button with queen 9. I think this is fine to just defend here. It plays fairly okay post-flop. I'm in position, which is even better. And again, everybody that I'm playing against is recreational, so that's also some benefit. I decide to make the call. Everyone else folds, and we're going off to a beautiful flop. An unbelievable flop that comes queen, nine, four with two hearts and a diamond. All right. This is what we've been waiting for all day. Looking to cooler somebody and get ourselves a massive, massive chip stack. Our opponent decides to see bet for 2K. And at this point, I'm going between two things. Is there any merit in raising? Is that overplaying my hand? And I think the answer to those two things are yes, we should raise. And no, we're not overplaying. We can get called by a bunch of value that's worse. Ace, queen. Pocket kings, pocket aces, I mean, the list goes on into infinity. Not to mention the fact that our opponent can easily have jack 10, he can have pocket, you know, any hearts here. So, with that being the case, I make it 7k to go. The unthinkable happens as my opponent ends up jamming for 42,000 chips. I don't think necessarily this is a bluff. Maybe sometimes he has like jack 10 of hearts here and is just willing to go with it. But it feels like a ton of the time, our opponent's never going to be overplaying a set like this. Not that it's overplaying, but like getting too invested as everyone's been playing snug, me included, honestly. So if that's the case, it kind of just leaves, I, I guess, like aces or kings with the heart that's just getting really carried away. I, I really don't know. Um, but what I do know is I have top two pair and I'm never folding. I end up making the call pretty quickly and our opponent shows the unthinkable pocket queens. That's uh, that's a one outer. That's uh, that's a pretty pretty unfortunate. Obviously, our opponent had the best hand the whole way. It's just in disgusting fashion that I find myself in a situation where I'm just dead. Top two pair and I'm dead. That's frustrating. Uh, I wish I could exaggerate it more than it is true, but we've been playing snug. You guys saw with the ace king. You guys saw with the kings. We made some really big laydowns, and uh, it doesn't matter if the variance is not in your favor. And uh, you just get Delta Cooler like this. Either way, the runout is, like I said, almost just, uh, yeah, it's irrelevant. The turn card uh, doesn't bring us any help. And the river card's like an ace of diamonds. So we'll lose a ton of chips there. And I'm uh, pretty much heartbroken. Uh, we are down to around 20k stack somewhere in the realm, which is still a ton of chips, you know? So like 40 big blinds or whatever. Um, but it does take the wins out of the sale. We do not win anything on our way to dinner break. And uh, we're going to go over to dinner break and try to feel better about ourselves and come back to our little stack and try to run it up. Number two this week, and Mariano is playing in a $25, $50 cash game at the bike in Bell Gardens, California. And be honest, would you fold in this situation? Things definitely not going very well now. Let's see if we can fix that by playing an actual good set of cards. And by that, I mean pocket kings. Another good situation developing here as Garrett raises to $400 and I'm next to act. Definitely going to raise it up so I make it $1,500 and it folds back to Garrett who makes the call. So we go heads up to a flop in position as well. Unfortunately, it comes ace high. So kind of a reflection of how the night's been going. However, I think I still want to bet small with all my hands. Definitely wouldn't mind checking back, but I decided to bet this time around a third of the size of the pot, $1,000. Garrett makes the call, so we're off to a turn, which is the deuce of spades. He checks again, and this time I'm happy to check it back. And things go from bad to worse as the jack of hearts arrives on the river, bringing in a potential flush if he was calling the flop with two hearts. And now Garrett seems to like that card because he bets out $5,000 right around the size of the pot. I've got kings with the king of hearts, so naturally a very disgusting situation for myself, especially against a player who's capable of having some creative bluffs. But even him, you know, I, I just don't see how he could be bluffing in this situation. I'm sure he could. Although I'm not sure with what hands he would do that with. Maybe he would tell me one day. But in the moment, I just couldn't think of anything that I could beat. So I decided to just fold. It sucks, but I just felt like I was beat. And I could also have many better hands to call with than, you know, kings on an ace high board with a flush out there. So I put my cards in the muck and move right on to the next hand. So number one this week, everybody, that's right, number one, and Ashley Sleeth's grandma takes the top spot. That's right, 
You heard me properly. It is Ashley Sleet's grandma. She's playing in a one, two ladies only meetup game at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. It is well worth clicking on the link to the original video down in the description box. It's where we always put them. Open up that description box, find the link to this video and watch it all the way through. It is an outstandingly put together poker vlog. Very, very funny. And as we said in this one, it is Ashley Sleeth's grandma playing in that one, two ladies meetup game. And I mean, you remember the first time you took your grandma to play poker, right? No? What's wrong with you? Welcome to Granny's very first played hand of poker. She raises it up to $5 with king queen offsuit in the hijack and the player in the big blind, it's also her first time playing poker ever. She is the wife of a floor guy here at MGM. She makes the call. One, two, one, one hundred. All right, now it's her turn first. Easy. So you can check? Yeah. <laughs> All right, okay, I will do $5. She leads for $5 and Granny makes the call. All right, now we'll see a turn card. And Granny just drops Rills the turn, 10 of clubs, she makes the nut straight. Obviously there's a flush possibility out there, but we've got the queen of clubs just as backup. Big blind doesn't like what she sees and slows down with a check. Now it's on to grand. Okay, so if you want to bet, you can put out more money. Okay. If you don't want to bet, you see, you can check. Okay, $20. I want to see your card. <laughs> I don't know if it's worth 20 bucks to me. <laughs> um, no, I'll fold. You got it. You got it. You made a royal. All right, Grant, you can show everyone if you want. Show the bluff. Show the bluff. Oh my God. And just like that, Grant won her very first hand of poker ever played. <laughs> All right. You win? And now, and now you, you tip her a dollar. Thank you. Oh, tip her a dollar. There we go. Nice job, Grant. Well done. Very good, Ashley Sleeth's grandma. Very good indeed, thoroughly enjoyable. And as I said at the start of that one, please do find the link to the original content in the description box below. While you're down there, click on the like button, click on the subscribe button, and do leave us a comment. We will always try and reply to them all. Well, that's it for another week. We hope you enjoyed this week's 10 of the best, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Until then. Good luck at the felt.